guys. Hi guys, Ian and just checking back in. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are one step closer to your goals and dreams. Hope you guys are falling in love. So guys, a quick disclaimer before we begin today's video. We believe we are all God's children. Every life matters and that the atrocities against human innocent human life is unforgivable. So anything that we're about to say right now is not an endorsement against any innocent life that's being taken. We cry for them, we pray for them. So let's begin, right guys? So basically, as you guys already know, what's going on right now in the world with the Palestinian and Israeli conflict. We tried our best not to make a comment about it. This is not a video about what side to choose or who's right or wrong. This is about a unbiased perspective, right? Let's first begin on something. The whole world, guys, is going berserk right now. We have never seen something like this in our lifetime where the whole world is protesting against the conflict that's happening. And it is baffling. It is bizarre. It is insane. Why, guys? All of these universities, we're seeing all over the news, all of these children at the universities, these young adults are um, protesting against the Palestine-Israeli conflict. They are protesting for Palestine. They are protesting supporting Hamas. Some people are even yelling that they are Hamas, right? And at the end of the day, we see people at the bridges. We see them stopping traffic, stopping the flow of goods, the flow of traffic for people commuting from home to work, to school, etc., etc. We see in Europe the amount of protests that are going on in the streets, and it's becoming a violent conflict where people are getting violent against Israeli supporters and Israeli supporters against the Palestinian supporters. We're seeing people go into stores and boycott stores, and we're seeing that people are getting hit very terribly by this, physically and financially. And it is not fair because everything is being thrown out of perspective, guys. So before we talk about anything, let's just simply say this. It is shocking to me that the whole world is reacting this way when things far worse have occurred in our lifetime and no one has even pushed an agenda, an activist movement on this scale that we are seeing today. Guys, put this into perspective. The ongoing civil war against Saudi Arabia and Yemen, more than 300,000 people have been killed. They assume that at least 70% of these people are children less than the age of five guys. Children guys, right? Look at the crisis in Sudan. Look at the Africans crisis, the hunger crisis. About 150 million people are starving of food. Think about in Sudan, at least 15,000 people have been killed, at least 30,000 have been injured, and at least 15.8 million people are in need of a humanitarian aid way before this conflict got any type of media coverage. About the fact that there's so many people hungry and little children picking bottles to try to get pennies to buy chicken to feed their families. Think about the fact that Bangladesh is being robbed by the Kali Jenners and being robbed by the Zara companies. Think about the fact that Apple, people were committing suicide off of the atrocities and the work conditions and the mental stress that were going on in Apple factories. That the fact that Apple's solution to it was to create a net so people don't die when they try to commit suicide, guys. People were boycotting Apple products. At the end of the day, Apple is the biggest phone company. This is an iPhone, guys. We all have iPhones, right? But it, we all have Apple products. But at the end of the day, guys, where was the crowd? Where was the activist? Where were the activists in 2008 when the market crashed because of lies and speculation by the government and the real estate tycoons? The government used $9 trillion of taxpayer money to bail out the banks for free, guys. What about the Capitol Hill riot, guys? What about the election fraud that went down? What about the fact that there's a big censorship in this century going on with all the platforms and social media and what you can and cannot say, constitutional rights being violated? What about the fact that um, right now, about the COVID-19 dilemma? What about the whole vaccination with Dr. Fauci and the scandals and all these type of things and all the pressures from the government for vaccination, non-vaccination, the inaccurate information that was going on, et cetera, et cetera, guys. What about all these type of things? Where was the magnitude of protest, activism, when so many crises are happening simultaneously, guys? You know why? It's because this is 
a battle against the Jews. It's the only thing. The Jews were the only variable that was excluded the whole time in this equation. The world is promoting action against the Jews. And the most ironic thing, guys, the most ironic things is that the Jews is the most persecuted people in history. They have faced the most humiliation and exile in history. So when people sit there and talk about a 75 year old conflict, at the end of the day, they need to go back a thousand years ago. They need to go back 2000 years ago. You know, a lot of people don't even understand where the word Palestinian come from. They don't even realize that in the first century into the second century, the Roman emperor um, basically coined the name Palestinian. So Palestine is nothing more than a word that is basically um, used to as a slur against the Jews because the land used to be called the, the province of Judea. So he wanted to eliminate any traces of the Jews. So he changed the name from Judea to Palestinia. It is a disrespectful name to disrespect the Jews, the children of Israel. So when people say we are Palestine and we originally owned this land, they need to go back in history and understand that it's not about who owned what land, but know who you are, where you got that name from, where your history comes from and who you are. After the Arab colonized everyone and pushed this type of ethnicity and pushed this name on everyone, right? We don't even need to be redundant about what happened in the Holocaust of the Jews, right? It, it, it's just, these are just, basic information and everyone knows guys so this remember this is propaganda guys right this is propaganda for two ways it's two roads it's a fork in the road the first fork is that companies are loving this why because at the end of the day uh people are boycotting so many different brands and giants we saw covid covid eliminated businesses that had 100 years 150 years in business COVID eliminated them people went bankrupt you know how many thousands of businesses shut down because of COVID it was a shock to the world and it's the same type of tactic being implemented here where big big corporations like Starbucks are being boycotted to the point where other companies are funding these type of boycotts why because on the ground scale level we've walked places and we've seen uh, Middle Eastern type of coffee shops open up and it was insane to see that this new brand new, new uh, grand business idea pop up and they're killing it guys they're killing it so people who put flags on their stores that we support Palestine they're making so much money in the name of Palestine Palestine is making people so much money you stand with Palestine they are filling your pockets guys think about a guy who franchises McDonald's these people go around saying boycott McDonald's so somebody franchises McDonald's they have nothing to do with Palestine or Israel they're literally trying to make ends meet they finally got the ability to invest into a McDonald's and here they are running their business and then the business crash why because some kid on YouTube or TikTok started a rant about how McDonald's is supporting Israel and you don't even know the view of the franchise owner it is so sad and idiotic guys you have people that are saying uh, boycott Nike uh, little hijabi girls running around talking about boycott Nike I'm sure you guys have seen the video before and they're wearing Nikes they're they're wearing white air force nikes it is laughable guys it is a joke they're going around trying to find all these type of products that are connected to israel or where uh their sub companies or, 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 or um uh, secondary companies under the parent company that are associated with israel guys this is so silly this is so silly they are destroying people's livelihood they have nothing to do with an opinion on anything that's happening people are just trying to live and like i said it all comes down to what two greater evils we have one evil, which is the financial corruption in the land, right? The second evil is Islam, guys. And this, this evil, Islam is the greatest evil, even though the financial corruption is almost there. But Islam beats it, guys, because Islam is against humanity. It is against secularism. It's against democracy. It is the ultimate threats to everyone's livelihood. Islam doesn't care what religion you are. They are coming for everyone. And these people, these Dawah guys, are using Palestine conflict with Israel to 
promote DAWA at scales we've never seen to try to convert people. And there's so many new reverts and they have no idea about the atrocity of Islam, allowing all these crazy things, the Islamic heaven being a whorehouse, marrying, being able to marry children, killing the non-believers, chopping off their hands and feet, hitting the jizya to the non-believer to, to humiliate them. And if they refuse the jizya to kill them, etc., etc. You guys know the jerf. We've done this many times. But guys, People are, are supporting Islam. Look what Iran did. Iran fired a shot into Israel. You had you have the Houthis, you have the Hezbollah, all these people launching, trying to kill the only democracy that exists in the Middle East. The only country that's going towards the future where the rest of the barbaric country surrounding it wants to go backwards and implement Sharia law. And they have some sort of Jew fetish, guys, where, like Muhammad said, the last hour won't come until the Jews are finished, right? It's written in Hamas charter that they want to annihilate the Jews. I don't know how much clearer this needs to get. So when you have people in America and we're seeing these protests and we're seeing these college kids camping and basically throwing their livelihood out of the uh, out of the door to support someone, you have LGBTQ, you have the liberals that are supporting Hamas, supporting the destruction of the Jews from the river to the sea. And they don't even know that if Hamas saw them, they would rip them to shreds. They're the kafirs, guys. They're the kuffars. They're the non-believers. They are the. They are so silly. This big gap in misconceptions and uneducated people about Islam and the threat that it bears. Like, think about it, guys. Who, who, who is America fighting, or who is Israel fighting? Are they fighting Iran or are they fighting Islam? Think about it. Iran's leaders, what? A Shia. What is he doing? He is following Sharia law. What is he doing? Fighting in the name of Islam. So are we really going against another nation? Or are we really going against an ideology? We are going against an ideology. We're going against Islam. And you have these kind of like democratic, secular type of Islamists and Islamic people that are living in the West, right? And they tone down a little bit, right? They're trying to like balance Islam and balance the democracy. And they're trying to weigh their rights, even though... That's not the real Islam because Islam is against secularism. But then they come and they give this nice, sweet, poetic version of Islam. And they sing it and tell people, oh, we're peaceful, we're loving. And remember, the religion and your identity are two different things. If you're a good person and you adopt a religion, does not mean the religion is good. Because if you are not fully practicing or fully following and agreeing with elements of that religion, you are against it, right? If you don't believe in child marriage, if you don't believe in the things that Muhammad did, if you don't believe in the marriage of Prophet Muhammad, the piss drinker that's be being beaten and killed in hell, lashed a thousand times by Satan himself, or what he did to the little girl, Aisha, etc., etc., how he killed so many Jews and uh, uh, basically had sex slaves, sold black people, hate black people. Prophet Muhammad hated black people the most. Right? He had black slaves, sold black slaves, etc., etc. You're not really a Muslim, but they still adopt it, right? And you see people who are wearing the hijab, and they they are literally Westerners, guys. But you, they're saying that they're Muslim, but they're not. But let's just bring it back, right? These people are pushing this on the liberals. They're pushing it on the LGBT. They're pushing it on the extreme activists. And what are they doing? They're using that, and they're going to the extreme of... Um, rioting and protesting against the Jews. This is a direct assault on the Jews. It is sickening, guys. Wake up, guys. Realize Islam is getting a kick out of this. You are boosting Islam in ways you couldn't even imagine. It's like helping the devil. You're helping the devil. And you're promoting him and giving him all the little army that he needs that he never thought he was going to get to be able to get to point A all the way to point Z. And... You know, we just want to say today, say today, how sad and sickening it is to see that this is what the world has come to, and there were so many crises going on in the past, and there were so many crises going on today, and we've never seen this scale of protest and the world being shaken up like this, guys. If people did this in the past, when things were always corrupted and all these bad things were happening, maybe the world would be a better place. But the fact that they all chose to push all this energy into one point to direct it towards the Jews. And it's crazy because the people that are living in nations, they're ready to vandalize heroes that saved the nation. They're ready to vandalize veterans. They're ready to vandalize monuments. They're ready to vandalize businesses. They're ready to vandalize, vandalize homes. They're ready to vandalize the police all for, quote unquote, Palestine and Hamas. Guys, it doesn't make any sense. These people are destroying their own country. 
to a protest for another country where those people, not the innocent Palestinians, but Hamas people and anyone who supports them, they will destroy everyone else. Like, guys, you must understand that once they attack the Jews and in a fairy tale world, if they're finished with the Jews, they're coming for all of you. No one understands that. These people have lost their mind, you know, and it's sad. You know, it's, it's sad to see that um, no one knows history. No one knows what's really going on. No one really knows Islam, right? This new generation of censorship. I blame this new generation of soft people, this new generation of wokeness, this new generation of like, hey, yo, that's not right. We have to treat everybody with kindness. And no matter what your views are, no matter how extreme it may be, they are in this delusional world, not knowing the threat at, that's at hand, guys. And it's so sad. Like, um, now everyone is scared of Islam. We already said that Islam brings so much money. But everyone's scared of Islam. The whole world is scared of Islam. And slowly, slowly, it's like they're trying to let Islam win. What do you think Iran? What do you think Hamas is doing? Laughing. Hamas's leaders are billionaires, guys. They're living in mansions. I mean, a mansion, penthouses. Living in penthouses, drinking the finest water, eating the finest food. All the Palestinians are starving. It breaks our heart to see little children starving, looking for food and water. People starving, innocent people starving. No one should ever have to go through that. But guys, think about the leaders. The leaders are in living this this lavish life. They don't care. As we saw in the video, one of the Hamas leaders, their children died. Did they care? No. They said they need martyrs. Why? Because the more martyrs Ham uh, the Hamas leaders get, the more it will anger Palestinians and people around them alike. So they can have more warriors, more jihadists. Guys, come on. Wake up, guys. If we let the scales that this is going on, we're going to eventually lose our country. We're going to lose everything that we stand for. And slowly the Islamists are going to win. This has nothing to do with religion you are. It's about Islam against all of us. It doesn't matter if you're a Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, an atheist. Islam is the biggest threat to the world, right? And remember, there's so many good and innocent Muslims. They can be saved as well if they get all the information and all of the apologists that are out there that are defending Christianity or exposing Islam. These people can get the information to save the, their selves. Right. That's why we do all. That's why everyone uh, work collective so we can try to put the energy and the information out there to try to save as much people as you can. And it, 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 it feels like the biggest uh, uh, feels like the biggest um, oxymoron. Why? Because it's like, how can you save someone but be um, non sensitive at the same time? It's like, come on, y y your approach is hurting people's feelings because exposing the truth means attacking something in ways that will hurt people. Because when you believe in something and someone attacks it, you're going to react in a very negative way. Or you might not want to listen. But to talk to you in a sweet way, you'll never be saved that way. So it's like an oxymoron trying to save a Muslim or trying to save people uh, and expose them against Islam. But nonetheless, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope this opened up your eyes a little bit. Thank you for your appreciation. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Until next time.